Oh, hallelujah. And that's where revelation is imparted and the exchange begins. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Soldiers of the Most High God. Officers, commanders. Under one chief and commander, Jesus, the Christ. Would you turn to Psalm 118? Psalm 118. Training for reigning. Psalm 118 and verse 21. <clears throat> is everybody there? Yeah. Let's speak it, because what you speak is what you eat, what you eat is what you become. I will praise you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. That means you have a choice to rejoice. This is the day the Lord has made. Now listen, this is something very powerful because so many times we kind of like just shrug it off or don't have the reality of it. Yesterday is gone. That day is history. Can never be, re, never be replaced, never come back. It's over with. You can't fix yesterday. The only thing you can do is let it go. Yesterday is gone. He says, this is, this is the day. That means this is a new day the Lord has made. And this is where we're to rejoice in. This is a new day. Everyone say new day. New day. How many of y'all know God is a God of new? He knew you. <laughs> Amen. He's a God of new. He knows it all. Verse 25. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now what? Prosperity. Bless us, you who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, and he has given us light. Bind the cord, sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercies endures forever. In other words, the word says his mercy is new every morning with a new day. This is the day, the new day that the Lord has made. Again, yesterday <laughs> no longer exists. The only thing that exists from yesterday is memories of good and bad. That is the only thing that exists from yesterday. Now, we have materialism that's been transferred over. But there's an area in the unseen realm that is constant. Now we know that in the spirit realm with God, there is no yesterday. There is a yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's all one. There's no space and time with him. Does everybody understand that? In fact, he came before the foundations were created and did what he had to do. But where our peanut brain can't comprehend that. You know, the other day I was having a discussion with the Lord and I was telling my wife, it was just before, I think it was just before I was in bed. I was in, laying in bed and I was just laying there. And all of a sudden this sensation, you might say, came over me and, I, and the Lord reminded me of his introduction to me, or his introduction of himself to me. And it was glorious. And, and he began to share with me and I began to see this glorious white cloud and it was it was big, and out of this white cloud, and I knew it was the glory of God, Jesus came. He walked out. 
And the Lord began to explain to me about this creation. And it's the creation of the universe. He's created multiple places. He's been around for a while. He always is and will be. And he began to explain to me the deity that he created for this realm. I don't know if you can comprehend this. Because he could not express himself in fullness. Nothing could handle his fullness. And he began to explain to me that everything to him, with him, in him, is pure. Everything is love. It's love. Pure, pure, pure love. His power is love. His judgment is love. His wrath is love. Everything is love to him. Everything. Everything. It's pure, radiant love. And he began to share with me and empower to me the arena to where we have such a hard time comprehending his love. Because we're so brought up in a culture of competition, compromise, evil. Every day is evil here, you know that, right? And the whole thing is the enemy tries to breach God's love in every area of our life. And we are to not only eat and drink and be filled with his love, but express his love. Again, his love is chastening. His love is conviction. This is pure love of God. But so many times, we don't get it. And we think God is angry with us. Or he's forgotten us. Or we can never meet up to his expectations. He doesn't see you as he you are, he sees you as who you are in him. But we have a tendency to always look at ourselves, what we determine by mirrors, what we determine by our mistakes, trials, our hurts, pains, all of these things, we're always determining who we are, our, our mistakes, our failures, even our successes. These are not to determine who you are. One of the things the enemy loves to do is try to breach your identity. And maintaining your identity is a, I don't want to say difficult, but it is a trying, challenging thing on a daily basis. It is constant. Because if the enemy can breach your identity by the things that surround you, things that affect you, it's very difficult to step into a new day. A new day means you left the old one. You can't have a new day without leaving the old one. And it's difficult to have a new day if you're trying to bring the old day, yesterday, into today. It is very difficult. You can't beat yourself up because it doesn't do any good. The devil does that for you. <laughs> it is time in the arena that we realize that God's love for me and you is so unconditional that it has nothing to do with what you do, what you've done, and what you're going to do. <laughs> he is, and that is it. <laughs> and He is love. Now, everybody has a choice to walk in his love or not. That means you must accept this. It has nothing to do with how you feel. It's an area of accepting it. When you accept the price of his death, he's saying, I love you. When he rose from the dead, he said, I love you so much, I'm bringing you home with me. Amen. 
He says, come out of the woe was me and pity party. <laughs> he is the comforter. He will guide us to all truth. But he's asking us to leave everything. Remember when he went up to the disciples? Amen. When he went up to the disciples, what happened? He said to them, follow me. And what did they do? They dropped everything. And they followed him. You know what drew them? His love. Amen. They didn't even understand why they wanted to follow him. But there was something radiating from him, and it was called his radiance of love. Go to 2 Corinthians 5. Oh, happy day. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it, right? It's a new day. Everyone say new day. Yes. Again, you can't bring yesterday and today. It won't be new then. In fact, mo most of the time, we contaminate to today <laughs> if we keep bringing it in today. Does everybody get it from yesterday? 2 Corinthians 5.12. New day. When there's a new day, what we want to always maintain is because God opens and door opens and shuts doors to season. And you can't go into a new season unless you completed what you were supposed to do in the previous season. You will stay in that season till you die if you do not complete what he's asked you to do. And the purpose of us is to be trained for the next season. So in that season, we have days. And every day is to be a brand new day for me and you. Look at verse 12. Let's speak it. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf, that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. Anybody know anybody like that? They boast in appearance, but not her. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. And if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer do what? Should live no longer for who? Themselves. That's the process, isn't it? But for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one who walks according to the natural. Somebody, the carnal. Again, there's two types of Christians. There's the carnal Christian and there's the spiritual Christian. The one who's building, filled and connected. The one whose heart set on the Lord, not so. Then there's the carnal Christian. That carnal Christian is one who's still worldly, still living for himself or herself. Amen? Let's go a little further. <clears throat> Verse uh, 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh or the carnal, even though we have known Christ according to the physical, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a what? He is a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. New creation of old things are to pass away. Again, anything associated with emotional yesterdays, failures, disappointments, sin, mistakes, Sicknesses, offenses, rejections, shames, bondages, and all interruptions with the kingdom living and the kingdom mission and destiny must be, must be cut loose. People wonder why they struggle today 
and don't remember what they did yesterday. It's got to be what? Cut loose. Verse 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Again, we must cut loose. Why? Because if you can't cut loose, you can't enter. You may enter the next day, but it won't be a new day. There's a difference. You may enter the next day, but God wants it to be a new day. It says his mercies are new every morning. And he daily loads us with what? Benefits. But so many times we miss it. He sets up appointments for us, but we're still entangled with the yesterdays that are still holding us back. And we miss when something's trying to come across our path. We're still trying to fulfill. Now, listen to this. We're trying to fulfill his will in this life. But we can't. He fulfills his will in this life. Not you. The only thing you and I do is cooperate so he can do the work. Right. See, so many times we are working things in the physical flesh and don't even know it. We are trying to fulfill the will of God in the physical. That's called carnality. We fulfill the will of God in the spirit. That's by yielding to the spirit in everything we do. In Romans 6. New day. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, this is a new day. Yesterday's gone. <laughs> Amen. It's dead. Literally dead. Anybody ever try to fix your yesterdays? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Did you fix it? Heck no. You made it worse. <laughs> Again, God is not about time. So he can fix anything at any time. And what, as long as you're connected today in the new day, he's fixing your yesterdays. And he's preparing your tomorrows to become a new day. Does everybody get it? Come on, we're going to go a little deeper here, right? Romans 6, verse 1. Let's speak it. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died in, to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death, that is the washing of the blood? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in what? The newness of life. Now can you walk in the newness of life in the yesterdays? No. He who is in Christ connected as a new creation. Yesterday's not a new creation. Everything yesterday is dead. The only way to maintain new creation is to walk in the new. New feeds new. Old does not feed new. In fact, it contaminates it. Glory. Verse 5. 
For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also will be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, to the old man, or to your yesterdays and past, yesterday's emotions, yesterday's hurts, yesterday's shames, yesterday's victories. Yesterday's gone. It's dead. He wants that place to be dead so we can step in the new every day. Or your next day will be nothing but a, another day. Verse 7. For he who has died has been freed from sin. He who has died has been freed from sin. Who, he who has died from yesterday's Sin or bondages is free today. You can't carry those on. If you do, you contaminate today. Oh, glory help us. Knowing that Christ... Now, uh, it, now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be what? Dead. Dead. I've never seen a dead man cry. I've never seen a dead man grumble. That's what he says, reckon yourself to be dead. He enjoys the death of his saints. Dead. This is not, listen, but ministry is live ministry. Amen. If is live. Amen. But, 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 but. But what if? That's all self. We are not the tail or the head, right? Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God for sin or yesterday's shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under the plan of God, which is grace, to escape. You are under the plan of escape. And that's escape yesterday's. This, isn't that what Jesus came to do? To set the captives free? What was setting the captives free means escape. We are baptized in the blood of Christ, cleansed from yesterday's sin, guilt, shame, and empowered to step into a new day. It's a new day of regeneration. It's a regeneration. It's in a position. It's a preparation for our eternal home. But we carry an eternal mission in a temporary realm right now. We can't lose sight of that. That's why it's important to stay connected. Staying connected. Staying connected to his presence, his power, his love, his truth, his word. Staying connected to the anointing. Staying connected. Too many people are getting disconnected. You know why? Because many of them are still living in yesterday's emotions. In Galatians 6. Galatians 6. Um, don't get me wrong. There's a time, time to mourn. It's about five minutes long. The only reason why people mourn is because they mourn for themselves. <laughs> or they get caught doing something.
6, verse 11. <laughs> Glory. Let's speak it together, please. See with what large letters I have written to you with my own hand. As many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, these will compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For not, not even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a what? New creation. New, the only thing that is of value in Christ's kingdom is the constant regeneration as a new creation. It is a constant regeneration. Philippians 3. You can't go back on the what ifs, could have, should have. You can't go back there. You go, you let that go, you learn by your mistakes. Amen. Other than that, then you either you lag behind God or you get in front of him. And things get worse. We're to be walking with him. Walking in the Spirit is walking with and in the Lord. Philippians 3, verse 7. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for the Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. He suffered the loss of all things. He was willing to let everything go. Sometimes God is asking, what are you still holding on? Why do you still fight for that? Why don't you let that go and let me? Why? Because you're not bringing, you're bringing yesterday's troubles into today. And it's not a new day. It's just another day. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. How many of y'all know that your trials and tribulations are an opportunity to gain Christ? And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, which faith is connection. Faith is what? Connection. That means you're connected to his presence. You can't have faith without him. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Hmm. Every day is a regeneration day of advancement. It's an opportunity. It's a place of choice. It's a place to be refreshed, renewed. Reunited. Reconnected. And rebooted. Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. A new creation in Christ feeds on the new. 
That's why he says, forsake not to assemble. Reconnect. Too many people are disconnected. And they're going into the next day. And it's just another day. It's not a new one. I'm telling you, there's a rejoicing in a new day. It's like brain spanking new. There's rejoicing in a new day. Woohoo! Hallelujah! This is the day you've made. And I'm going to rejoice in it. Why? Because it's new and I don't have to bring my stuff from yesterday and today. Isaiah 40, 28. Your offenses, your rejections, your fears, your doubts, they don't have to come in today. And God knows what you're going through. You don't have to explain it to him. But Lord, you just don't know what I'm going through. <laughs> like, he's not God. <laughs> he knew it before you even did it. He knew it before it was even going to happen. Not that he didn't try to warn us. But we were too caught up in yesterday. Woohoo! Verse 28. Isaiah 40, verse 28, let's speak it. Have you not known, have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. So he's got it, okay? He gives power to the weak. Hello. And to those who have no might, he increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utter fail, fall, utterly fall. But those who what? Those who wait on the Lord. Why? Because your weight is to connect. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up with wings like eagles and drive Harleys. <laughs> they shall run and not be what? Weary. Weary. Hello. And they shall walk and not what? Faint. Faint. Everybody has a horse. You know that, right? You got your own horse. I've seen them. Lord took me one day and, uh, uh, and uh, I found myself in a garden and I was on like a bench that you would see in a bar park. And I was sitting on this bench. It was a wooden bench. I was like, well, not like that. And I looked at my dress and I was like, I was a little boy about eight, nine, maybe 10. I had shorts on. High socks, clean cut. I had to double check and look at myself. <laughs> and I'm there. And, and the Lord comes walking in with a horse. And, and, and he sits down next to me. And he begins to talk with me. And it's like, Daddy? And I look, and there's a coat, like a, a, a coat rack. And, and on this coat rack, there was glittery. And it was goldish. And gold and silver, whatever, mixed together like. And after the Lord got done, he let me know that was my horse. And he picked me up and put me on the horse. I thought, man, this is too big. Big, solid. And as I be he began to take me out towards the edge where the garden, and there was an opening. And immediately what was on that coat rack 
was no longer there. It was on me. And I was a warrior. I'm a horse. And that's what he sees all of you as. As a warrior on a horse. Dressed with the full armor of God. Empowered and strengthened. And demons are actually afraid of you. But they mess with our thoughts to make us afraid of them. And that's not how it's supposed to be. Hallelujah. He renews us. He empowers us. He strengthens us. If you're not living in yesterday, but see, you can live in glorious experiences with the Lord because the glorious experience with the Lord is not a yesterday event. It's eternal. Oh, grab hold of this. If you are living in yesterday, it's hard. But the new day always is cutting loose the things that interrupt your mission and destiny from yesterday. You're cutting them loose. They should be offensive to you. You should hate those things. Romans 12. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Oh, glory. Romans 12 and verse 2. Ah. Let's speak it. And do not be conformed to the world, <clears throat> but be transformed by the what? Renewing of your thoughts, that you may prove what is that good and that acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one what? A measure of faith to stay connected. Anybody remember what is the shield of faith? What is the, behind the shield of faith? Integrity. Integrity. Verse 4, for as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us, what? Use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Our ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liber liberty. He who le leads with diligence. And he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be with what? Our hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil and cling to what is good. Does everybody get that? I think people have a hard time with that. So many times people are still petting evil. They're compromising evil. Even as Simon has said, I despise a vile person. Renewing your thoughts to cut loose the worldly entanglements and the traditions of yesterday to walk in the new day. Isaiah 26. You'll come on. How was your day? It's a day. It's a new day. How was your day? I am blessed and highly favored in this new day. Why? Because I didn't take yesterday into today. Isaiah 26 and verse 1. <clears throat> I believe. 
In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God will appoint salvation for walls and bulwarks. Open the gates that the righteous nation, which keeps the truth, may what? Enter. You will keep him in what? Perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you, O oh Lord. Because he what? Trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever for an uh, Yah, the Lord is everlasting strength. For he brings down those who dwell on high, the lofty city. He lays it low. He lays it low to the ground. He brings it down to the dust. The foot shall tread on it. The feet of the poor and the steps of the needy. Those who set their mind on the Lord will always have peace. That's why we're to set him before us in everything we do. If he's truly before you, that's called relationship. The moment he's not before you, relationship is broke. Psalm 61, I believe. I'll tell you when we get there. I can't read my writing on this one. Glory. It's either 61 or 68. Oh, yeah, okay. 61, verse 8. One verse out of the psalm. What does it say? I will sing praise to your name forever that I may daily perform my vows. Daily perform my vows. Fulfill my mission. He says, I will praise you. Praise is what connects. Ephesians 5. How many of y'all know you got fulfillments to make Every day, God says, I daily load you with benefits. And in those benefits, there's also areas that he's requirements. Those are commands. Not our will, his will. Not our commands, his commands. Ephesians 5. I will daily perform my vows. That's my commitment to the Lord, your commitment to him. Ephesians 5, verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but what? Expose them. That's why so many times people are not exposing the association with darkness and they're bringing it in the next day and it's just another day, not a new one. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because of what? Because the days are what? Evil. We are in the most evil days, and they're going to get worse. But it'll be worse around us. Can't touch this. Do, 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 do. Can't touch this. Do, 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 do. It's hammer time. Anyways. We are to expose darkness and stay awake, alert, consistent, always ready to depart from the things of yesterday and enter the new day in Christ because in the world, every day is evil influenced to the lost and those who are saved. It's constant. Listen, if, if you know, we just did a teaching on the bait of deception. Man, you bite that bait, pew, 
You're out of order. And you're not going into a new day. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6.10. Glory. Is everybody okay? Amen. Ephesians 6.10, let's speak it. Finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and the power of his might and not your own. <clears throat> put on the whole armor of God. Anybody put on a... Don't raise your hand. Everybody should put on the whole armor of God. If you didn't put out on the whole armor of God, God have mercy on you. I was going to call you something else, but I decided to have God have mercy on you. <laughs> Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the trickeries of the devil. Hello. Uh, for we do not wrestle against what? Flesh and blood, the unseen realm, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. They're after you. They hate you. They want to set traps every single day for you. They're praying against you. They're actually fasting and praying against you and bringing curses on you. But a curse without a cause is no good. Amen. Don't give them a cause for the curse to be manifested. Verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the what? Evil day and having done all to stand. Everybody must work out your own salvation. When you get before the Lord, your spouse is in there or your attorney or your money or what you've done or what you haven't done. It's you. You will stand before him and give account. But why wait till you go home? Give account every single day. Amen. Be strong, be connected, be filled, be empowered, be grateful. Be joyful and be dead to the old self, sin, and worldliness so you may enter the new day. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy 2. I pity those who cannot enter a new day. I feel sorry for them because they're missing the joy of the Lord. They're missing it. Every one of us goes through stuff, but thank God we go through it. The quicker you go through it, the better it is to enter a new day. Verse 1, you therefore, my son, be strong in the plan of God that to escape, which is called grace, that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from us among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men or women who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure, everyone say endure, endure. hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You will endure it's going to happen. You're going to be hard-pressed. Things are going to, You're going to get disappointed. You're going to get rejected. You're going to make mistakes. The whole thing is, is don't get disconnected. Get up, shake the dust off, and get connected. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged, now he t shares with us, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. 
And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Be strong in the plan and mission, purpose and destiny. Everyone say, I'm called, I'm called. to battle. Yeah. My purpose, purpose is to destroy, destroy. Satan's, kingdom. Satan's kingdom. My destiny, My destiny is, to is to infiltrate the world system and rescue souls. Rescue souls. Second Thessalonians, we'll close here. What happened to Lot's wife when she turned to look back? It wasn't salt to the earth, you know. It was different. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Hallelujah. Everyone say, I'm going on, I'm going on. With, or with or without you. Amen. Verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you, not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will come, will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Look at the falling away has already begun. Amen. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. So who's restraining him? We are. The body of Christ. Or else all hell will be broke out. I mean, just because it's the days of evil... It's the presence of the body of Christ. It's restraining evil from taking over everything. Verse 7. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he, capital letters, who now restrains will, will do until he is taken out of the way. That represents the Holy Spirit and the body of Christ. We will be taken out of the way. That's called the rapture. When we are removed from this earth, that will bring the wrath of God. Verse 8. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of who? Satan. With all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Because they did not receive the what? The love of the truth that they might be saved. So you must love truth. If you love truth, you love him. You can't say you love him and not love truth. Verse 11. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they may, that they shall believe the lie. God is going to allow them to believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification. Salvation through sanctification. I got to say that again. Salvation through sanctification. Not salvation through worldliness. Not salvation through sin. Salvation through sanctification, that means you must be sanctified unto him, separated. So many people still believe in one saved, always saved. You can go out and do whatever you stinking want to do and expect to get home. Why even take that chance?
But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in following of the truth to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. And now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, God and Father, hmm. who has loved us in giving us everlasting consolation and good hope by his plan of grace, comfort your hearts, establish you in every good word and good work, so that you and I may be signs and wonder of his pure love, glory, and the price that he pays for me and you. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed for the new day. This is the new day. And we will rejoice and let go of yesterday that we may step into today as a new day. This is not just a normal another day. This is a new day, sanctified by the Lord, prepared, predestined that we may step in, not looking back but going forward because the end result is homebound in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.